I don't normally pay attention that much to the Ubuntu release cycle. Most of the features that come out are just kind of minor improvements, but every once in a while there's a feature that I cover on the channel, but for the most part, Ubuntu just kind of keeps on keeping on, if you know what I mean. It just slowly gets better and just does what Ubuntu has always done. But today I was reading an article over on OMG Ubuntu, and on OMG Ubuntu, Joey has made an argument that the next release of Ubuntu 23.10 is making a huge mistake when it comes to the amount of packages that they're including on the ISO. So apparently in 23.10, they're not only getting rid of the minimal install option in the installer, but they're also going to be making the default installation much more minimal itself. So you're not going to be getting anything like an office suite or a image editing application or a mp3 or slash video application things like that none of that stuff will come pre-installed now joey here argues that ubuntu's main audience or at least part of their audience is new to linux users and those new to linux users may or may not be able to find the applications that they want also they're not going to have a great experience if they have to install basically everything themselves right out of the box so joy makes the argument that ubuntu is better when it has at least a default experience set up right out of the box if you want to be able to play a movie or if you want to listen to music if you want to edit a document if you want to crop a picture you can do all those things right out of the box but once 23.10 launches that will no longer be the case they've gone a little bit too minimal now I will link this article down below so that you can read the rest of Joey's argument. I don't want to just sit here and read all of the article to you because it's just easier if you go and do it yourself. But what I wanted to talk about today is twofold. First, I want to talk about Ubuntu itself and whether or not this idea of them becoming more minimal is a good or bad idea. Just kind of the content of the article and we'll talk about that for briefly. But I also want to talk about the merits of minimal distros and the idea specifically that minimalism is both good or bad. And I want to talk about my opinion on which side of that argument I come down on. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you'd leave a like on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. So first, let's talk about Ubuntu specifically. So in 23.10, they're going to be removing a lot of software in order to make the ISO more minimal, right? And they want to... The goal here, at least supposedly, is to make that initial ISO download smaller and make it so that there's less things there for them to maintain. If you want actual choice in installing stuff, you can then install it afterwards. Now, I believe I've read somewhere, and I may have just picked this up on some random blog, so whether or not it's true or not, I don't want to claim that it is. But I've heard that they're going to be adding some options to the installer where you can actually install stuff during installation so that... If you wanted an office suite, you could check a box or something like that. Now, whether or not that actually ends up getting pushed through, maybe it was just a proposal or something like that, I don't know. But if that's the direction they're going, then this all is going to be no big deal in the end, right? If that's not the way they go, a more minimal ISO on Ubuntu, for me personally, does not make much sense. Simply because Ubuntu does have an audience that is less nerd-like than the rest of the Linux community. And I say that with 100% love, but a lot of the Ubuntu community, when they, or I should, should say a lot of the people who come to Ubuntu either are very new Linux users or very, very new Linux users, and they've never really had to build a distribution up from the ground up. They've never had to install all their applications. They, they probably don't even know what applications are actually available. Now, Joey in his article does make the point that it's really easy to go into the software center and install applications, and that's true, but you have to know what those applications are, and one of the greatest ways to experience Linux is to try things, and you don't want to have to download things to try them. It's kind of like it's kind of like the free samples carts you get to see at the, the supermarket. Every once in a while you go in and you try a piece of whatever and you get to try it and then you get to buy it. So it's kind of like that, whereas you have a distribution, you want to be able to try things. You've, in, you've managed to install it, which is the hardest part. And you want to have an experience, which is complete. By making it super minimal, they're making it not complete. So you're not going to have an office suite. You're not going to have an image editor or an image viewer. You're not going to have certain applications that you probably would want to have if you want to try out a distribution and see how it works. Now, obviously, 
some distributions go too far and think that they have to install literally everything under the sun, so those start to become more bloated. So we've all seen the distributions that install three MP3 players, four video players, they have a couple email applications, they have five browsers. We've seen those distributions. I've talked about them on the channel. I've looked at them here on the channel. And those are all like, what are you doing, man? We don't need five different browsers unless you have a specific like actual need for them like your penetration testing or your testing websites or something like that it's like de development browser distro thing right those words were supposed to be in a certain order i'm sure that they weren't in the right order <laughs> i just kind of spew them out it doesn't matter but you guys get the idea right so we have two ends of the spectrum and it seems like ubuntu is navigating towards the other one the problem here isn't that they're going super minimal it's that their audience expects a complete experience and by removing some software from that iso that experience is no longer complete joey in his article also explains how in certain developing countries the internet is a problem and you have to download more stuff after install i don't think that this argument holds up all that much because if you were going to download the iso you're going to be using that bandwidth whether it's during the ISO download or post install. So if you're going to be using that bandwidth, it doesn't really matter when you use it. I would say if the argument was then that people would be getting the ISO in a non-downloadable fashion, like they've purchased a USB key or something like that with Ubuntu on it, so they're not using the internet at all, then this does become a little bit of a problem, whereas they'd have to then use the internet in order to get the mainline applications that they want so that's an argument you can i can really go either way on that one uh, i can see the point uh, i'm not sure if it was well argued or not but the whole minimal idea for ubuntu does bother me a little bit because the audience is so now i know that there are a lot of long time ubuntu users out there the thing is is that when you argue that the long time linux users or long time ubuntu users are people who just install and install this stuff anyways, that's okay because making those guys uninstall stuff, making them go out of their way to do something extra afterwards, while it's not necessarily great customer service, it's those are the people who you can upset, right? Because they're longtime Ubuntu users. They're not going to go flying away from Ubuntu probably just because they have to uninstall a few things because that's what they've always had to do. Like if they don't want Ubuntu, if they don't want LibreOffice, they have always uninstalled LibreOffice, right? When you are creating an ISO like this and you want to appeal to new users, if that is the case with Ubuntu, we could argue whether or not they still want to attract new users. We can have that conversation another time. But if they do want to attract new users, they have to kind of keep in mind that new users do want that complete experience. And you don't want new users who are just coming to Linux are much more likely to hop to a different distro or go back to Windows than your longtime Ubuntu users. So you want to have that first experience, that first impression to be really, really good. Otherwise, they're going to go elsewhere. Now, that's not that big of a deal. I mean, we really don't want them to go back to Windows, but hopefully they'll, at least if they do leave Ubuntu, they'll go to another Linux distro. But the idea is that you want that first experience to be as good as possible. And by going so super minimal, maybe that's not no longer the case with Ubuntu. So that's the Ubuntu thing. Let's go ahead and then and jump in and talk about the minimal ISO argument overall, like more broadly. And you can obviously name the distributions that you'd consider super min minimal, right? You, you, you'd consider like Puppy Linux and Peppermint and Arch and Gentoo, you know, all these distributions that are very, very low end. They're either all the way put together like Puppy or Peppermint, or you literally build them up from scratch, right? You, you can think of, you know, Arch or Gentoo or Debian or something like that, where they have very minimal installations and you build them up to your specifications during installation, right? So those are the minimal distributions. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have things like Garuda, we have things like uh, Arco, those distributions that are very opinionated when it comes to what comes installed, but also give you a ton of options for literally everything. The installation probably is going to take two or three times as long as an Ubuntu install, simply because it gives you a ton of different options. Now, Arco does have their minimal or beginner user installation, so you know you can go a little bit different direction than that. But the point of Arco has always been giving the user as much choice as possible and that does at times make it seem much more bloated than things on the other end of the spectrum right so 
Obviously, many distributions have come down on one side or the other. For me personally, I don't care one way or the other. But I do think, and you may have sussed this out when I was talking about the Ubuntu stuff, that whether or not you're in a minimal distribution or not does dictate quite a bit whether or not you're user or new user focused. So the more minimal you are, I would argue the less user friendly you are. Now that doesn't always hold true because you can talk about Puppy Linux and you can talk about Peppermint. Both of those are very good for new users because they're ready to go right out of the box, but they are minimal. So the argument doesn't hold up 100% of the time, but in a lot of cases, the more minimal distros do tend to be less user-friendly simply because, not, uh, I shouldn't say user-friendly, but less ready to go right out of the box because the user has to take extra steps post-install to get to the place where they need to be in order to make it fully useful, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does make it less new user friendly because those extra steps post install are steps that the new user may or may not know that they need to take or how to take them, right? And a lot of times it's just a matter of opening up the software center, but then they have to know what things to download and having some things pre-installed that they can just click on and like if they click on LibreOffice, they're going to know, hey, wow, that's an office program, right? If they click on VLC, oh, this thing plays videos. Okay, it's pre-installed. Now I know I can do those things. And I've already learned that those programs do certain things. Whereas if I have to go into a software center in order to do those things, I have to actively search out different things. And also, and this is one of the things that Joey says in his article where he searched for office in GNOME software or in the Snap Store probably, and LibreOffice wasn't even in the top five or six results. It was all weird things like Sublime Text and stuff like that. So you have to deal with the quirkiness of software centers as well. None of them do a fantastic job of discovery. Like none of them really do. I mean, they have gotten way better over the years, but they're still lacking in that area. So that, that's a problem for me. So when a, a distribution is super minimal, I consider it mostly, not always, but mostly less user friendly or less new user friendly, I should say, than a distribution that has more added onto it. Now, obviously you can go too far. And I think that even going so far as to go to the other end of the spectrum. So if we talk about Arco, that's not new user friendly either. So there is a happy medium here that I think is a good place for distributions to be. You don't want to be so minimal that you don't provide a good experience out of the box, but you also don't want to pro provide your users with so many choices, not only pre-installed, but during installation, that it just confuses the hell out of them, right? You don't want to get... I mean, the vast majority of new Linux users probably don't know what Intel or AMD uh, microcode actually is, so they don't know which one to choose. Um, I, I know that if I... If, if, my mother or my niece or nephew decided they're going to install Linux. They probably wouldn't be able to tell you what processor was actually in their computer. Now, I always base the level of normism, normie, norminess, <laughs> the level of the the person being a normie. I'm going to come up with a word for that eventually, based on the people that I know, right? And the normal people in my life don't pay a lot of attention to what's in their their software so or in their hardware so asking them to make choices for dependencies that they need in order for their computer to run probably not a good idea also you don't want to have them to have to make choices between different office suites or different video players or stuff like that so the best new user distros i would argue are those that are very opinionated but also somewhere in the middle of minimal and bloated so Things that, and I would say that prior to the 23.10 changes, Ubuntu hit this right on the on the nose because they included LibreOffice. You had an Office suite. They had a uh, they had Thunderbird, so you had an email client. They had uh, I'm not I think they had Rhythmbox for music, right? I'm not sure what they had for. Oh, they probably had GNOME Videos for video. So they had all the the major main things that you would want installed out of the box, so you could just go to Ubuntu and you could use it. That's the perfect new user distro. It has all the stuff. Now, if you want extra stuff, you want if you need CAD stuff or you need if you want to change browsers, then you make that extra effort to go search out that software. 
but the initial first use experience is all set and ready to go. You can do literally everything you'd want to do, at least in terms of basic stuff, right out of the box. Once you go to minimal, that experience falls apart. Once you go to bloated, it becomes too confusing. So the best new user experiences for a Linux distro are right down the middle when the distro maintainer has made the choices for the dis for the user out of the box. Now it doesn't mean that they, they are going to be forced to use those things. They can obviously uninstall stuff, they can reinstall different options, all that stuff. That's what makes Linux great. But the whole point of a Linux distro, and I think Joey makes this argument as well in his article, is that distros should be opinionated things that the distro maintainer is presenting to you, right? The distro has made choices for you. That's what draws you to a certain distro. So if you are someone who really likes options but likes all the GUI stuff, maybe Arco is the way to go. If you really like the design look of Garuda, you could. that's the way to go. Maybe the same thing with Manjaro. You really like the way Manjaro looks. You like the idea of Arch, but maybe it's a little bit stable. All of these opinionated opinions that the distro maintainers have made is what draws people to a certain distro over another. Once you take out the opinionated stuff that goes into a distro and just makes it make it super minimal, it's no longer a full and complete distribution. It's just a minimal ISO. So to me personally, like I said, I think that the minimal idea is fantastic for people who are longtime Linux users, people who understand and pretty much know the things that go around Linux. You know, they know all the application options. They ha they already have their preferences baked in, whether or not they like GIMP over Krita or Kden Live over Olive or whatever. You know, they have all their preferences, and they can. Go they're always going to go make those choices post install, anyways. They probably have a script to do it because they're nerds. When it comes to new Linux users, they don't have that experience. So having a template out of the box helps them. And I think that in broad sense, not just in a, on the Ubuntu thing, but in a broad sense, the more opinionated distros that are able to hone it so that it's not, not bloated, but well opinionated and has all the things that you need to do right out of the box, I think those are the best distros. So... In the comment section below, where do you come down on this? What's better, a minimal distribution or a bloated distribution, or is it better right down the center, like I think? So in the comment section below, let me know what you think. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. You guys are awesome for doing so. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can support me on Kofi at ko-fi.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Just truly, thank you so very, very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and happy and all that stuff. I'll see you next time.